All hail the saviour of globalism, the man who stopped Europe's populist revolution dead in its tracks. Victory for Macron, for France, the EU and the world. The French people have chosen hope over fear and unity over division to defeat populism. America needs its own Macron. Macron is charismatic, smart and ballsy. Can we borrow him? The man who became so popular, he now has an approval rating of... 18%. Remember when Macron, despite looking like a little boy, tried to out-alpha Trump by doing that weird endless handshake? And that series of over-the-top grab-and-pull handshakes. And that time when he ignored Trump. Up right there is the Angela Merkel. Oh, oh watch Trump. the shade. Right there is Macron, the watch Trump. The enemy of the Secretary General of NATO. <laughs> yes. so All the while, not really noticing Trump low-key trolling him time and time again. Like that time he took Macron for a walk. Or that time when he brushed dandruff off his shoulder like he was his mum. In fact, I'll get that little piece of dandruff off. It'll be, we have to make them perfect. All that time when after Macron ignored him, Trump pulled Macron's shoulder out of its socket. I believe these leaders think President Trump's, um, I don't know. Yeah. Well, he's not looking very alpha now, is he? This is the manlet they heralded as the rescuer of the international elite. And look at him now. 18%! 18%! Macron's got a lower approval rating than an incel at a sorority house. So the French are protesting. Protesting against their lunch break being cut to just four hours? No. Protesting against getting a work text outside of work hours? No. Protesting about not being able to protest by going on strike for half the year? No. This time, it's for real. The yellow vest thing stems from it being the law. Yes, really, the law in France for every citizen to have two high-vis jackets in their car at all times. Which truly illustrates the kind of bureaucratic, onerous oppression that our Gallic friends are buried under. What are they protesting against? The soaring cost of living, gas tax hikes, and open border madness. This is about lower middle class and working class people, most of whom live in the countryside or small towns. The great majority of the writers were men and some women in their 30s and 40s from suffering rural towns in northern or western France. People who were being left behind by globalism, seeing their quality of life diminish while millions of migrants get a free meal ticket. But not a According to BuzzFeed, no, they blamed the whole thing on a Facebook algorithm change. Because when I watched this woman's impassioned rant, during which she told police, Look what you do to us, you should be ashamed of yourself, we don't even hate you, you should be with us, for the people, for France, for our homeland, for our nation. The first thing I think is that she must have been motivated by a Facebook algorithm change. Because you see, when there's a social media driven uprising that the left approves of, like the Arab Spring, that's good, and social media is good for facilitating it. But when those evil populists use the very same tools to organise a demonstration, that's bad and it has to be frowned upon. But this is also about the sheer arrogance and contempt for ordinary people that globalists like Macron exude. Like when he lectured that teenager for calling him Manu, which is a popular nickname for Emmanuel. Like when he compared himself to Jupiter, the ruling Roman god. Like when he branded millions of Le Pen supporters hateful cowards. And despite early promising signs, like when he said migrants who aren't in danger should return to their home countries, or when he said African women had too many babies, which actually boosted him in the polls, those numbers began to sink when Macron went soft on immigration. Like when he said that mass migration with over 100 million African migrants heading to Europe in the next 30 years was France's destiny. Then staging an open borders photo op with a migrant who saved a baby in what some people said looked like a suspicious setup. Then posing between a half naked man showing his middle finger and a convicted criminal. Then saying the epicenter of the French language is now in Africa. Then saying there was no such thing as a true Frenchman. Then saying nationalism was a betrayal of patriotism. You can't get any more globalist than that. This is the same Rothschild banker who walked out to his victory election 
nation celebration with the EU anthem playing in the background. Macron is the embodiment of borderless globalism. He's not a president. He's a glorified administrator for the unelected European Commission. France's rejection of the UN global warming tax is a repudiation of the idea that a technocratic elite have the interests of anyone else but themselves at heart. It's almost a mirror image of what drove Trump to victory. The silent, forgotten, non-urban majority realising that their entire economic future has been sold down the river in favour of cheap foreign labour and goods. Realising that their only option is to move to the city and compete with the rest of the drones as a service industry minimum wage slave. Cities where integration of migrants has failed to such a degree that France's former interior minister predicted societal breakdown within five years, being forced to abandon communities where farming and local industry were once enough to sustain families and fuel lives of authentic simplicity and squabble for resources in these dystopian metropolises. France is a Catholic country, but in the last 30 years, more mosques have been built in France than all the Catholic churches built in the last century. Their country is being reverse colonized. Listen, when the country's top two selling books for decades are both about a coming civil war and France becoming an Islamic caliphate, you know something's rotten. And as we all know, the French are experts at surrendering. And that's exactly what Macron did within days of Saturday's demonstrations. First suspending the fuel tax for six months and then scrapping it all together. But illustrating how this is by no means just about tax, protesters have vowed to push on until all their demands are met. Their demands include, quote, those who are denied the right to asylum should be escorted back to their countries of origin. A real integration policy should be put into effect. Living in France implies becoming French. French language lessons, lessons in the history of France, and civic education classes with certification at the end. Authorities are gearing up for absolute chaos this weekend. A spokesman for Macron told AFP, we have reason to fear great violence this Saturday. At least 65,000 police out in force. The Eiffel Tower closed, and not just for its planned redesign. Shops throughout central Paris boarded up. The French government even fears rioters could storm the Elysee Palace and stage a violent coup, that they could attack parliamentarians. French government spokesman Benjamin Griveaux says politicised and radical elements are trying to turn this movement into an instrument. They want to overthrow the government. Yellow Vest leader Eric Drouet said, quote, Saturday will be the final outcome. Saturday is the Elysee, adding, we all would like to go to the Elysee. But how will the police respond, given that some of them removed their helmets in solidarity with the protesters? Now the protests are spreading to Belgium, Germany, Holland, and other European countries. In the Netherlands, protesters again cite political correctness free speech and open borders as their three main concerns. Are we witnessing a European spring? I don't know, because the French do love to have a good riot. Burning cars and running street battles are just part of their weekend leisure activity, but many are saying the scale of this is unprecedented in 50 years. Is it just a flash in the pan? Or is the middle class revolt against globalism about to kick into high gear? What happens this weekend will provide us with a much clearer indication. Please click the big red button to subscribe. It really helps me when you do that. And click the bell to allow notifications so you never miss a new video.